Welcome to Alexi. And welcome to the Top Hat Lounge, episode 8. I have a whole lot of people with me here today. When I call your name, make sure you uh, introduce yourself. If you're new to the podcast, make sure you let us know who you are, what team you're on, what lane you play, any other fun information like that that you wish to uh, divulge about yourself that is appropriate for the stream. <laughs> yes. So with me today, we have, as per normal, we have TD Ribbon. Hello, hello. We have Taco. I'm second now. I'm moving up. <laughs> At least you know who you are this week. I think. <laughs> Last week you I was going to say that it. no matter what. Yeah. yeah. And, and we have Storm returning with us, who is going to be uh, taking a permanent seat. So congratulations on your, uh, your name seat, Storm. Hello, hello. Thank you, thank you. And for our guest today, we are sitting with Wooly Bully. Hello, Wooly Bully. Self-reclaimed worst ADC and Arbiter. Uh, former member of Siren, now a free agent. We have AFK Boulder. Hi. Uh, I'm from, or I'm the support from Akuma Shurikens. And we have Piglet. Yo, what up? Owner of NLE, an occasional player for the Legionnaires. So, that is who we have with us today, so it should be a lot of fun. We're going to start off with our highlights from this week's games. Now, guys, remember this is any league. What caught your eye the most? Which game caught your eye the most? And we'll we'll start off with some guests and get them a little comfortable talking with us. So we'll start off with Piglet and work my way down. I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> good job, good the, job. Out of all the games that, that, that went on this past week, was there a game that caught your eye? If so, which one? Uh, I think the Akuma versus um contingent on from Warden. Watching that one, I was uh highly expecting contingent to win that because I uh, when we played against Akuma, I wasn't very impressed. But seeing them perform, they might be, I think, the next best team. Okay, uh, AFK Boulder. I was going to ask if I was allowed to say my own, um, but since that's already been taken, uh, I'll say Seneca and Eleni was pretty interesting. Um, I think I felt that N uh, NLG was going to win, but uh, it was pretty big because with them winning, it knocked, uh, or with them and us winning, it knocked Cherry's team down to, uh, down to fourth. And yes, for for the record, you are allowed to talk about your own teams. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Storm. What about you? Um, I want to say bare minimum versus expired bandits was a pretty good series. It was kind of our last in sector one that kind of had effect on standings because if robust would have pulled through in two at bare minimum, we would have been able to steal second. But mm -hmm. can only pull cards from my man so many times. <laughs> um. And then we're just waiting on our last series from Sector 2 to lock in all our playoff standings between OMT and Contingent Yellow, I believe. Okay, okay. Taco, what about you? Uh, the team that Cherry played with Septi. Cherry's team is Contingent Orange. Yeah, that one. That was a great game. <laughs> great bangers. <laughs> some people got skull fucked, some people did not. <laughs> Ribbon, what about you? Both team played great, though. I will say. Uh, time to double down on the cherry skull fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'll start it. I'll take all of the heat. Don't you worry. Uh, so, uh... <laughs> your teams, Ribbon, or your uh, your your highlight of the highlight game of the week. Um, hmm, I would probably say, uh, probably Conlet Monarch versus Team Siren went to three games. It's pretty hype. I mean, with Siren being the best, probably the best team in, uh, 
Spectre 2 and Arbiter. Um, Kano taking a game off is pretty hype. Okay. Wooly Bully, what about you? Uh, I'm going to say the Cherry Skull fucking. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, I think the game that games that triggered me most were uh, Spelling Bee Champions versus Rift Busters. Uh, Spelling Bee Champions into drafts so incredibly hard in that series. Uh, it was difficult to watch. Uh, and then I think the the Siren uh, Conduit series was really good. And I think the rest of Arbiter should be very scared of Siren after si seeing what I saw. If they can work out a few minor details on shot calling from what it looked like in their games, uh, that team's going to be unbeatable. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So there you have it, everybody. Those are the highlights of the week uh, with a little spice thrown in. Uh, that moves us over to Arbiter. Um, and we will start off with finding out what do you guys think was the most impactful game of the week in Arbiter specifically considering they're going directly into playoffs week one next next Monday. And we'll start from the bottom again. Will he continue? And I thought it was going to be the Rift Busters SBC game, but SBC just threw that so hard. It's hard to get a read on. Like, I feel like Rift Busters bot lane duo is probably the strongest in the league, um, but I don't know if the rest of their map can match what that bot lane's capable of. Um, but it was very interesting to see them pop off the way they did, especially in game one. Um, they should have, SBC should have known to never allow Google Mop on Tom Kench. That was just, that's blasphemy in IBS G. Like, you just, you can't let that man on Tom Kench. All right, Storm? <laughs> um, I want to say it would be Trash Panda versus TD Poro. Mm -hmm. If Trash Panda just squeaked one game out of this series, they actually would have made playoffs if I'm looking at everything right. Correct, and yes. yeah. That's just kind of a heartbreaker because it's one of those you have to know they went into it knowing it too. Mm -hmm. There yeah. was a lot of uh, there was a lot of DMs about okay we need how many games to get into play like it, from a number of teams so yes they they definitely knew. Yeah, that was the one I was actually probably gonna end up mentioning, but I think I was also gonna gonna mention the uh, the TD Royal versus Dynasty Eclipse, Eclipse the fact that Royal got two zero, yikes. Um, that kind of just led to the whole scenario playing out the way it did. But okay. I don't know. Okay. Eclipse almost played spoiler. Interesting antidote there, uh, as far as TD Royal is concerned. Those set of games uh, le have led to some roster changes for them going into playoffs. Indeed. True that, true that. Uh, AFK Boulder. I think I've got to be spelling me and Riftbusters, right? Like... That was a that was a really big series for them, and then losing it, also losing the playoff spot. Okay, Piglet. Uh, I would have to go with the Trash Panda game because I think they're a much more deserving team of playoffs than TD Royal going into this. But because they just couldn't pick up a game off TD Poros, they just miss out. Well, out of those games uh, from last week, does anybody have an MVP, a player that did, did like, exceptionally well that you just want to give a shout-out to? So, all right, AFK Boulder, did you have an MVP? <laughs> uh, looking at it, I think both games, uh, Surgeon, the, the ADC played pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I think I'd give him ADC just from, just from scoreline, but... Okay. Storm? Uh, I'm going to give it to Salmon's Ritual. Okay. Purely Maybe because they... Ritual. Personally, just because they were willing to pick Jace and Arbiter. And I think that takes some balls. <laughs> <laughs> Taco? Oh, I got to pick it. Pick it. Yeah. Oh my god, I cannot speak. The Jace pick. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> That's know? all I gotta say. Okay, so we're sticking with him. <laughs> Riven? Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, the funny man on TD Poro. Uh, okay. 
played Schmolder, did well, and then uh, played very well, and Jen didn't die at all in both in that series. So, okay, shout and out, Wooly. Um, I, I'm gonna go one specific game and one player, and that was game two of the TD Harmony Contingent uh, Red series. And I'm this pains my soul to say this, but I'm gonna say Toxin for playing Lee Sin <laughs> on 200 ping and actually <laughs> performing. <laughs> like that's kind of insane. That was nice. a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know. He is playing it. from Korea. That is very. He true. is playing from Korea at this. What at this the time. fuck? Yeah. Yeah, balls of steel and that very well may have been his first time competitively playing Lee Sen as well <laughs> oh so I yeah I don't know what possessed that man in that game but something something <laughs> well congratulations to everybody that got nominated for uh, MVPs this week in Arbiter um, now if everyone wants to take a look at the playoff bracket for Arbiter so you can see who's fighting who in, in week one um, I will also say it, obviously, but we have uh, OSG Avalanche going up against Riftbusters, TD Poro versus Conduit Monarch, Tactical Feed versus TD Harmony, and TD Royal versus Team Siren. That is the streamed game because Siren hasn't gotten streamed during the regular season, so uh, that is how that got auto-chose. Um, what do you think is going to be the craziest fight for round one? We'll start with uh, we'll start at the bottom with Wooly. There's two games that are really sticking out here for me, and that's the Tactical Feed, uh, and is that TD Poro? Tactical uh, Feed uh, against or Harmony. Harmony. I mean, yeah, yes. Harmony. Um, and then the Riftbusters OSG match. Um, I think Tactical Feed is a better team than most people give them credit for, um, because they often get very underestimated, but they've been playing together so long that they play the map really well. Um, mm -hmm. Scrim them enough times and watch enough of their games that they they play m better than their individual skill together. Um, and then I I just have this huge question mark with Riftbusters, as I kind of mentioned before. Um, like, their bot lane is so strong, but I don't know how the rest of their ma map matches up against other teams, really. Mm -hmm. um, I picked Riftbusters, uh, but that's really like a coin flip game to me. Uh, it could go either way, because if that bot lane takes over, they could easily carry games. Okay. Okay. That brings us up to Riven. Um, I would probably say... Which... Hmm... I think, yeah, I think the biggest banger is probably going to be Tactical Feed versus Harmony. I, I think I would have that one going the distance, like, 3-2. But I'd have at least... I, I kind of... I don't know. Maybe it's my bias, but... And I did post my pick -ums, but I think Harmony comes out, comes out of that one. But I think that one's going to be a banger. Okay, I believe, from what I can tell, pretty much everyone who has done their um, pick -ums so far since we posted it, has picked Harmony to win in that particular matchup, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Taco. I got to go with the Rift Buster game. I just think they might just get skull fucked. I'm a huge Avalanche fan. Okay. Um. So, yeah, we're just going to continue on the skull fucking train. All right, time to prepare the cancellation letter. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, I've already told you guys from last week. <laughs> no apologies coming from me. <laughs> I'm imagine the, through. Imagine the timeline that Riftbusters walks away with that one. That's crazy. I was just going to say, good job. <laughs> good job. Storm, yeah. what about you? I am interested to see what happens in this OSG Riftbusters game. My Riftbusters definitely has had a very strong bot lane by the looks of everything, but I think if Riftbusters can get drafts in order and start picking human things, that they can make it competitive. Because OSG is not a team you're going to beat with one in six Jace. <laughs> but other than that, I, I, I'm a I'm gonna take you the dark horse. I'm gonna take tactical six... feed. 
you take that one in six Jace <laughs> and you enjoy it. I'm taking it to the bank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cash in that paycheck. It, it's right. okay. The only reason he didn't pop off is he didn't buy the T1 skin yet. It'll be all right. Exactly. That, that, that's what He's waiting for there. the paycheck Skins. to hit. All right, AFK Boulder, what about you? I'm going to go out of left field with this one and say I think I'm most excited for Team Siren and TD Royal. Mm -hmm. um, it might look like the most one-sided, but that's also the most dangerous position to be in as the uh, the favorite. So many times I've been in the playoffs with like a top team, and then you just take a first-round exit because you feel way too overconfident. Um, I think they need to recognize that just because they are favorited doesn't mean it's a pre-win, and then go into it with that same level of prep and intensity they would uh, with the top team. Okay. Peglet, what about you? Uh, I think the TD Poro Conduit match would be a pretty good one. Two high-ranking teams. Mm -hmm. Be a banger. Absolute slugfest. Just two men grinding. <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> I want to say I big time agree with you, Boulder, on the overconfidence. However, I think with the amount of roster changes that Siren's gone through, um, they're really trying to like find their foothold with this new roster. Like it, it completely changes the way the team plays. They're now much more of a team fight team. As to w the difference being, when I was on the roster, we were very much a one three one team. That we were going to one three run every game because our sideliners were going to smash every sideliner in this league. Um, I still think Python is probably the best top laner in Arbiter. Uh, I think Nettis, Chungi Mung, the mid laner for Siren, is one of the best mid laners. He's very much a KDA player, but he plays team fights at a much higher level than most mid laners at this skill level. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think that this roster suits them better than the previous roster did uh and i think that they're gonna i think they're gonna be perfectly fine in that match they just they've got to work out some of the kinks from what i saw in their series against conduit they just some decision making on where to go after team fights and and that kind of thing and as soon as they do that they're off to the races okay cool beans well, I think that's uh, actually going to wrap up Arbiter League, and we're going to move on to Sentinel, which is hosted by TD Riven. Alrighty. Sentinel, Sentinel, Sentinel. Um, every game in Sentinel this past week was another 2-0 fest. Um, Angie 2-0'd my team, TD Bless, uh, which, to be honest, probably not a surprise to most. Um, Brahmas Matter 2-0'd NLR. And Conduit 2 0 uh, Dropping Point Hellfire. Um, so, kind of a chill week, I guess, in regards to Sentinel. Um, I think all the games kind of went how they were expected to go, no upsets. Um, is there anything that caught your eye this week? Uh, taco from Sentinel. Uh, I didn't see any Sentinel games, unfortunately. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have time to watch Sentinel. It's like the only group I didn't watch this week. Um, in regards to standings, um, I guess, I don't know. Uh, Sentinel's hard because I feel like when it comes <laughs> three games, so just uh, when all three of them are two zeros. Uh, the only thing we can really talk about is, I guess, playoff implications a little bit. But um, well, I believe uh, Sentinel still has two weeks to go before we they do. Get the playoffs. We do. There are so some. In, there there are some implications though. Um, if my team continues its slide, <laughs> I mean we're guaranteed, but it's really just seeding for my team. But uh, Kondo was looking to lock in their spot, and they play against us, so. That's going to be a fun one in a couple of weeks. And then uh, RAR is looking to move up in the standings as well. Um, Brahma is Matter and NLE Valkyries are still fighting over to see who's going to be the number two seed. Um, so that's going to be pretty big. Angie, though, is pretty... I, they're pretty much locked. They're locked in the first. Um, 
which is unsurprising. But uh, Anneli and Bromwise are fighting for that buy. So that's going to be an interesting watch to see who ends up with that. I guess my big question would be with how we have two weeks winding down in the season, uh, how do we expect um, the seeding to go in regards to Sentinel? Uh, I think the big thing is where it's pretty much, I'm pretty sure that NLR isn't going to be making it unless they like go on this crazy freaking miracle run in like six, six zero. Or I don't, did he? Yeah, I don't know. They'd have to go on a crazy miracle run, but for the most part, um, I guess it would really just depend on how Conduit does, but I think NLR would have to go 6-0, and and then Conduit would have to drop a game. Um, so, for the most part, it's kind of set in stone, just seeding. Uh, in regards to seeding, how do you think you guys will... How do you guys think this will end up in Sentinel? I guess I'll start from the top and ask uh, Piglet. Um, I... Th- I think it's actually very possible for NLR to actually make the run past Conduit looking at, you know, the schedule. NLR has a uh, very playable games for them. This need to somehow beat my team, I guess, in the week nine. And if they can manage to do that, they actually sneak in because Conduit, uh, Conduit has a tougher schedule against TD Blessed and against my team as well. Mm-hmm. I will say yeah. this, and I'm. I will say this. I think uh, NLR lost the play. Like they didn't only using Q for you retire. Like what's the or? <laughs> I'm, I think he posted something in chat. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So they're losing their jungler. Um. So. I guess we'll see. Uh, for NLR, I don't know. I mean, if if you're with one of your players, and I thought only using Q for you is probably their MVP player on that team. If you if you're losing that right before a potential playoff spot push, then uh, I don't think things are looking good for you. But maybe that gives them a spark. Yeah. For sure. But for the rest of the standings, I think Angie will take the top seed. Yeah. And if NLE wins out, we should be second due to head-to-head against Braum Lives winning that. Mm-hmm. BLM will take third, and then I believe it would be like TD Blessed and Roar finishing out, and then depends what happens. I would assume Conduit would take hold on to the sixth place if we end up beating NLR. Mm-hmm. So roughly I don't see much changing really other than maybe like TD Blessed or Roar swapping. Okay. Uh, how about you, Boulder? I think there's not much movement in the standings, to be honest. Uh, th- there can be upsets, but I think that, for the most part, that's going to be pretty locked. I think NLR's road, while while doable, is extremely hard, right? They have to essentially 2-0 both series and then hope that Conduit isn't able to pick up a uh, single game. Like a single game, yeah. I think it's I think that's a tough ask because at that point you have to play well and then hope everything goes right. Mm-hmm. Um, while while doable, like, the odds that I give it is like maybe eighty five fifteen. Right. Do you think uh between who who do you think will get second seed between Bromwise and Emily? Let me double check real quick. See Emily and Bromlives. I mean, Bromlives is playing Rar, and then they play uh, Veracity, mm-hmm. where Emily is taking on Conduit, and then NLR. Um, I think strength of schedule wise, Emily has a has an easier time. Yeah, I guess I actually, it's really thinking. comparable. Any game against Veracity, the wins are already counted into their standings. So. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Bromlas just needs the one series then. Yeah. 
I think NLE can definitely take second, but if we're talking about ease, it's definitely for Brahms Live Matter. They have one series to play, and mm -hmm. so uh, I think it's easier to play one than two. Yeah, we're looking at, we have the 4-0 the rest of the league. Yeah, I think it's just definitely easier to be on that side of, I just need to win this one series, and then we secure second, mm -hmm. you know? All right. Um, what are you thinking, Storm? Um, I'm I'm gonna give Enelie a little bit of faith in Sentinel, mm -hmm. mostly because Rar has to play Brom lives, so hopefully yeah. we we throw some throw some love their way after accidentally kicking them out of playoffs and Sentinel or Crusader. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them faith in one league. So we we knocked them out of the other one. <laughs> All right, and then uh, bully. Can't see much changing. Looking at you know the matchups and what's going on, I yeah I agree. I think fifteen percent's a little crazy on uh, NLR making it in. I think it's more like five percent. They're on a they're on a hope and a prayer. I'm trying to be like generous with my odds. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, it's definitely a very tough ask. Uh, it never feels good either when you making it in is left up to things that are not in your control but hopefully they focus on what is in their control and make the best of it all right well i think that probably concludes our talk on standings but uh i guess we'll go transition into more mvp talk granted I, every time we've done this discussion outrage has been on everyone's minds because he is kind of just stomping the league uh, from the adt position um so this topic kind of gets a little a little boring but uh, I kind of wanted to do a different spin. Um, is there any player on a team that you guys think is getting underrated right now? Um, and uh, any team, well, any players that you think might even have, like, what's your MVP for that team, I guess, as well, if there's anything. Uh, clarification, I guess I kind of butchered that, but any team, any player that's underrated on a team that isn't Angie, uh, that's my clarification. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you are oh, you're going okay. under the radar buddy <laughs> sure uh well i appreciate that taco um my team has not had a great last three weeks so i <laughs> um but uh i guess for me a player that's been sticking out to me that a lot of people haven't really given too much love for has actually been a uh, stoic on brown lives matter he's actually doing crazy as well um yeah like in the in adc but um outrage of course is in that same position so we always look towards him as being an mvp candidate and he has basically been the mvp of the league but if you look at stoic he's actually like outrage is sitting at 131 kills stokes is at 111 and every other adc is in double digits so yes. stoic was going to be my pick uh i've seen a couple of blm's games uh the one thing that i think could like could have turned to that conversation i mean outrage is just playing out of mm -hmm. his mind but if stoic doesn't trade as often like some mm -hmm. of the the deaths that he's had uh were probably a little avoidable avoidable but uh like you take you take that into consideration, I think he looks even better than he does on paper. Mm -hmm. He does also lead all ADCs in deaths by a wide margin. Um, yeah. So that, I mean, he, I played against him, and that, he has a very aggressive play style, and I really love to see that from an ADC. Um, I mean, 111 kills, but also 70 deaths just kind of tells you you're playing on the edge, and I, and I like to see that from an ADC. Um, I guess, um, I talk, if you're being serious about me being the MVP, your underrated player, then cool. But is there anyone else that stuck out to you? Uh, no, I, anybody else that I could really say right now, uh, I haven't watched too, too much of the game. So I don't want to say somebody who had one good week and just hasn't played well the rest of the week. Okay. Um, how about you, Storm? Any players sticking out to you? 
A little underrated. Um, underrated. I'd I'd probably say Zarek's on our Sentinel squad. Mm-hmm. He, coming in, he hasn't even been in for the full season. I don't believe for them, and he's already just going off leaderboards. He's number two in Vision a minute. Um, on the Deathless leaderboard. Rars getting a bit buffed by half the roster hasn't played half the season. Right. But he's up there and I know I think he's only missed maybe a week or two. Um, uh, I'd have to look into it. I don't know how I don't know the time on the timing on that. But he's been a pretty big contributor in the games they've been able to pull through and win. Just either by facilitating being on that first blood leaderboard. Mm-hmm. Vision the fact he's not just throwing games getting caught, um, I'd say he's a pretty big case for why they've been winning a lot of these games. Cool, cool. Uh, Boulder, what are you thinking? Underrated player? Uh, There's no one that a, sticks out. That's a good question. I think... Um... Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I was looking at the uh, the lane stats. Toxic mm-hmm. did not play last week, did he? Uh, toxic? Am I looking at that right? Sentinel. Penalty. Toxic. I do not see. We had a buy. Yeah. So it's oh, okay. Yeah. That would make sense. That's so why I didn't see him. Um, I mean, looking at the stats, uh, the amount of vision control that Toxic has, uh, is a lot, especially coming from like uh, like Sentinel. Mm-hmm. I would personally say that being able to be at almost like three vision score per minute, uh, as as a support is is really big. Um, you're providing so much information for your team, and that's some of like the intangible stuff that people look at. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd probably give it to him. I'd, I'd assume that vision setup is one of the biggest reasons for an elite success, but... Yeah, I mean, I remember playing against them a couple weeks ago, and yeah, no, their vision control was a big reason as to why I think Bless struggled against them. They were really well... Re- they did a really good job setting up. We, uh... Watched it. We've all reviewed those games, and they were very informative. So shoutouts. Um. All right, and I guess uh, Piglet. Do you have an under? Do you have an underrated player? Uh, I have to give it to my boy Sirius Dalswad on the Valks from NLE. Uh, sixty percent kill participation, second in mid lane. I believe he has the second most damage for mid laners as well. And then, you know, second and percent of team damage for mid laners, as well as, I believe, something along damage from. But he is roughly like second, and he doesn't play very much of a carry style. He's much more of a facilitator. So, mm-hmm. in team fightings and just combat based, he is holding up his end and doing it well in his position. Especially given that we put him more towards a facilitator utility type of player and leave, you know, our ADC in sub- jungle to be the carries. So he's making do with what he's given, what we draft for him. And I think he's very going unnoticed. You know, he's been doing a great job. Um, I remember playing against him and our lane phases were really even, were really even, but um, when it came to team fights, he did a really good job of facilitating his team. Yeah, um, I played. I think it was game two. I played Galio into him, and uh, that was a fun matchup. It, he it was a, it was a Syndra into Galio. It was a fun one. Didn't go well for me in the end because of how our team fights ended up going. But lane phase was fun. That was a good. I had I had a fun time. I enjoyed laning just because of the competitiveness. And we both play very similar styles. We're both facilitator type players. Alright. Um, Alright. Looking at next week for Sentinel. Um, 
we have Conduit versus. Uh, oh, hold on. I got it wrong. But yeah. So it's going to be uh, Roar versus Bromize Matter. Um, it's going to be Anneli Valkyries versus Conduit Prime. And then Dropping Point versus Needlessly Large Rods. Um, what are our predictions for this upcoming week? I will start from the top. Piglet, how do you think these games will go? Um, I think it's almost how you would expect off the just looking at the leaderboard or standings. Braum, Lives Matter, would likely beat Roar, and Ali beats Conduit, and LNL R takes down Dropping Point. I don't see much upsets happening, and I think it's barely clear how it'll go. Well, uh, for NLE's sake, you probably want Rar to take the series against Braum Lives, so then it gives NLE a, chan a chance to get that second seed. Um, but, uh, Boulder, what do you think how these games are going to go? I'm kind of on the same boat. I think that it's uh, probably uh, Braum Lives, NLE, and, uh, and NLR. I don't know. The more that I think about it, I, I think Drafting Point has a chance to win. Um, it, it's not like it really has any impact on playoffs other than securing that NLR doesn't make it. But still somewhat interesting. Mm -hmm. Alright. Uh, Storm? Um, I'm gonna go 2-0 RAR. 2-0 NLE. Uh, and 0-2 for Drafting Point. Just because we gotta we gotta keep the storylines intact. Gotta have some fun content for next week. I don't care if I have to coach the Sentinel roster to death to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, dude, I have a reputation on the <laughs> podcast to keep up. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Taco, what are you thinking? I think the only upset game that I can see more possible than all the other one is the dropping point game. And that's just dropping point winning. Hmm. Yeah. I'd probably lean the same way. Um, my biggest concern is with NLR losing their best player, uh, how is that going to affect how the team plays? Um, do you think the other matches will basically just go the same? Yeah, they should just go the same okay. compared to everything else. Uh, for myself... Um, I think Braum Lives Matter will go, will take it over Roar in a 2-1. I think Roar will take a game. Um, I think it'll be a close series, that one, because Roar has been on a steady uprise. Um, so I think they'll be, uh, they'll look to probably take a game off Braum Lives. Uh, NLE versus Conduit, I have NLE winning that 2-0. Um, and for match four, I think I have NLR beating Dropping Point at 2-1. But I think that one's going to be really close. And then I get to chill, because I'm on bye. Um, and yeah, that'll... Oh, I guess I forgot Bully. Uh, <laughs> Easily bully. forgotten. Yeah. Easily forgotten. <laughs> what are you thinking? Uh, you know, I'm going to just say, despite losing their best player, NLR rallies and has a huge 2-0. Uh, and it's not even in question during the series. Um, but I can't see any upsets happening, honestly. Yeah, I feel like Sentinel has kind of been the league where the upsets don't really happen. At least the last few weeks, I think it's just been two zeros across the board, and it hasn't been anything crazy. Um, so, I guess with that, we'll wrap up Sentinel, and then we'll head over to Crusader. And Crusader League is brought to you by Storm! Hello, hello, everybody. I'm glad we, we've made it this far. Um, to all my wonderful Crusader friends that directly skipped to this part, welcome. Um, to start off with something we had to follow up from two weeks ago, we had a wonderful fraud check lately. Um, Galaxy and us had our game last Friday. Um, Nutty Nate is trying his best. But uh, Narn Xante. Isn't meant to beat you at 15 minutes. Beats you at 20. 
Sorry to tell you. I also don't need to outplay you. I just need to outplay the rest of your team. Um, I want to say we just locked in pretty much all of our all of our playoff brackets, except for Contingent, who's got one last series to play coming up here, which technically could shift a bit of our playoff matchups because someone just thought it had to be cool to tie <laughs> seed two three and four with wins but they did it i'll give them that they did it uh going in i want to say what was our matchups this week schedule we had we had bare minimum versus expired bandits cg blood moon versus galaxy and we played divine temple divine temple stuck it out played it even though it was their last game last season even though they were kind of knocked out but uh we had some Storylines on our own. Our uh, sub jungler is apparently pretty good friends with Sarcasm on that roster. Um, sarcasm could have asked for a bit of a better of a draft, but he was opt a little bit. He man was never touching Gragas here, even if he tried. Then our how did these wins go out? Expired Bandits got two would by bare minimum. TG Blood Moon two would Galaxy, and we two would Divine Temple. So pretty quick six game week. And NLE caught the week seven by curse, RIP. But overall, we had pretty good games from everybody going through here. Badger finally got his uh, show out, not getting drug across the finish line by Doc Davis. Week, shout out him. I can tell you, uh, Chakras from Galaxy wasn't a huge fan of the Roa mid lane build from the Aurora, but. He's not the one who got two out, so who are we here to judge his pick? But going off these, what do we think was probably the most important of these matchups for this week? We'll start at the bottom with Wooly. I'm going to be honest with you, I have no idea. Hell yeah. Uh, I watched all these games. I know... <laughs> Ask me, teacher. Like, Ask me. I know. <laughs> I yield the floor to the man who knows. Taco. So, as we know, Devon or er, expired bandits taking that win was massive. Oh, just kind of knocking out NLE. Sorry, Piglet. Uh, another massive game that was played was the Cage Monkeys. They lost two to one. Um, in. I'm sorry. They were just fighting for second place, and I believe that was for a a bye week, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, because they were against contingent. So them fighting for that bye could have helped them out, but now what I'm hearing is they're going through some roster changes, uh, meaning just subbing some people in or putting their substitutes in uh, over some starters. Um, in the week one game, it's going to be very hard for me to choose for them against going to against bandits versus monkeys just because I like them. But the most roundabout whole thing was the most important game was that cage monkey game, in my opinion. That's fair. Yeah. That being the the <laughs> series that kind of took the playoff brackets for a loop because them one dropping that one game and then two contingent pulling this through actually just forces this tie also instead of it being pretty simple. But yeah, no, it was, it's actually had huge implications for this week. You're, you're a hundred percent right. Riven, well, any opinions? Well, I was going to talk about the cage monkey game, but <laughs> I, I think, I think that one was crazy. That was, I don't know. It was huge. Uh, for all the, play all the playoff implications and everything that comes with it. Um, I guess a fun gaming beating Galaxy was expected by me, but shout out Resilient, my boy. Um, yeah, uh, that was kind of it for me. I think the Cage Monkey game was crazy. I will admit the one series out of this week I was really hoping was going to be a banger was going to be the Galaxy vs. Blood Moon series yeah it was out stylistically just team v 
team versus five v five, they play almost identical, where mm -hmm. they've got a lot of a lot of resources built in top lane, and then they try to use top to disperse it. So I was hoping it was going to be a bit more competitive than it was, but my uh my sources definitely not resilient. Um, inform me <laughs> that it did not go that way. Yeah, look, if there's any time. Anytime there's an opportunity for me to cancel Resilient for any reason, I'll take it. But unfortunately, CG Blood Moon is kind of too good right now. I Perfect. can't cancel somebody else. <laughs> it, it do be like that. Before we wrap it up. Going off these, the week seven picks, is there any pick that kind of stood out as kind of like Arbiter's Jace pick? Is there any champion pick in any of these games that makes you go like, what are they cooking? What do they got going on? Uh, yeah. The Cage Monkey game. Why do you let Ubu Slayer have Aesol? I'm <laughs> that pick coming through was just kind of blasphemy. Fair. Uh, Divine Temple having a lot of fun with their ADC comps. Uh, we had a bear. <laughs> <laughs> we had a virus top. Uh, Draven mid and Lotion ADC. Uh, with a Viego rounding out in the jungle with a Zyra support. <laughs> um, looks like they're just having fun, which you know I respect. Um. But the triple ADC comp is really funny to see. Uh, apart from that, we did see um, Alessandra mid come out from Galaxy Gaming, which Alessandra, as a mid laner, we just don't really see her too often. She's usually just picked as like a little blonde counter. Um, and she hasn't really mm -hmm. been strong in the meta as of late, but seeing her come out is really cool. Um, yeah, it's kind of what I see at the top of my head. Yeah, I I agree. There's well, yeah, definitely not been a lot of Lissandra. Doubling back to important series, I thought Conduit Syndicate was also kind of important. Um, mm -hmm. And then through the games and seeing how close it's... So, like, if Syndicate had won that series, they, they went 1-2, losing to Conduit. But one more game win would have secured them that second spot. And then I'm, like, looking through these drafts, and Hep picked Irelia in one of these games. And I'm like... She's not super meta right now, but uh, that mixed with uh, like an Aurora top, I haven't seen mm -hmm. too much of it recently either. Um, normally it's always like permanently banned. Um, but we also got another Lissandra pick from Chinese Spy into the Irelia, which uh, in my opinion is really tough for Irelia to play. There's so much CC in that game, and uh, she has to be like a huge victory condition for the pick to work. Yeah. I only look at the picks themselves. I didn't see the bands, <clears throat> but it kind of surprised me to only see one instance of Seraphine Senna bot lane. Because um, if you look at like NACL playoffs and um, <clears throat> some of the other minor regions that are playing on newer patches than EU and Korea, um, that's been a very prevalent bot lane because of just how powerful it is. Um, so it's been kind of surprising to me in all leagues last week that it wasn't more, uh, picked. Mm -hmm. It makes me wonder if the attestment of that is people saw the nerfs coming and just haven't put the scrim time into it. And I'll admit Senna in her current state, if you played old Senna, it's, it's the same champion, but it's definitely doing a different thing. And I think people haven't just power budgeted for it yet or figured out how to really play with it. But, yeah, the champion's bonkers. Yeah, and I don't Everyone think they nerfed her on enough. It. No, not at all. Yeah, I think everybody's like, oh, it's they've already killed it. And it's like, no, they nerfed it, but I don't think that's enough to, to change how powerful that champion is. It may take some of the edge off, but uh, she's just super strong right now. I'll admit, I think leaving Uwu Slayer's ace hole up, kind of wild behavior. I don't, I don't know why you'd ever choose that. Uh, Chris from Syndicate pulling out the cane. Homeboy's gaming. Homeboy's gaming. 
and then round out Yarlet from ex uh, Expired Bandits with the action, auction top. I think that's the first time we've seen auction this entire split. Someone could fat check me on that, but I do not remember seeing it in anyone else's games either. You said auction? Yeah. I can uh, check for you. Uh, like, is this actually the secret A-Trap? A that was the, uh, the only auction has pick. been picked once. He's Come been on. banned it twice. Listen, I just got auction this this past week. I I'm not happy. <laughs> also, because it was I was probably uh, I'm not gonna talk about Sentinel too much. Well, it's Crusader time, but I played Cassidy, and then they picked Akshan, and I was very sad. Anyway, we can continue. <laughs> We also just had our recent new additions to the league, at least from our team. I don't know if there's been any other major roster changes, but Mustard Gas and Jenka both joined the league in last last week and then Jenka this week. Um, both, or no, Jenka was last week too. Yeah, Jenka's been in two weeks now. Both showed out. Um, I cannot complain. Mustard came in and did exactly what I thought he would do which was run Galaxy's bot lane and then Divine Temple. And Janka, from taking his two-week hiatus, got subbed in off a of, oh no, and just decided to pop off. So shout out to both of them, making it so I don't have to break my back. That was nice. Does anyone else have any like MVPs for this week? We can start with you, Taco. You're the one who reached out. Uh, yeah, I would go with Uuslayer this week. Oh, yeah. Ruben? For the MVP. <laughs> um, I see one second to look over it, but I think uh, Onset on Cage Monkeys performed very well. Uh, I think... Oh, yeah, wrong. I forgot he yeah. got a Penta. I'm sorry. Yeah, crazy. Um, went 11-0 and 3 on Kai'Sa. Uh... And then uh, the gin game wasn't as eventful, um, but uh, he then played an okay vein game, but that Kaisa game was insane. So true. I give him the MVP for that. Piglet? Um, I'd have to say Uru Slayer. Like, you can't give him a soul, that's just insta win for them. And he really showed up. Like, I guess game two and tried in game three. I mean, he's the heart of that team, I believe. True. true. Boulder? Uh, I'm going to give it to T1 Jace from CG Blood Moon. Um, he picked my favorite champion in game one and then my least favorite in game two. But, <laughs> uh, no, I think, um, I think in game one, his Cassante was a huge reason for that win, so we'll give it to him. That's fair. Between playing against Jace's Cassante and games and scrims, I'm good on that. Wooly, any? Uh, the only game I even got a chance to catch was, I think it was game one of the... Uh, uh, bare minimum series mm -hmm. and uh, watching Badger pop off on Aurora. <clears throat> what do you have, like an 18 KDA in that game or something crazy? Uh, and that was really all I got to see out of any of these games. That ends Crusader, and that will bring us over to Warden. Um, we need a couple of minutes. Oh, did Cherry actually join? Cherry she just joined. Join, so we don't Not actually need here. a couple of joins. Yay! Timing. So we are moving on over to Warden League, which is uh, run by Taco and co-hosted by Cherry. Anyways, I'm going to need a live recap of all the strays I caught, because we're going to have to address the Oh, I fucking called foremost. you out. I don't care. We said your team got skull fucked. Yeah, no, that was, about what that was about what happened. Yeah. That wasn't a stray. That was just a... I don't know. Really I, I think we played okay. I think we got dumpstered bot lane. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, 
both games started like pretty poor. I walked up uh, game two, and uh, I threw like I misused my ability, so we lost lane prio. And then uh, Smolder had to start E level one in game one, and so it was just doomed. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't gonna say that, but like, I'm not gonna disagree with you when you say it. You know. I think if Smolder <laughs> just started up you there, he also gets like five stacks, and his lane feels a lot better. I don't know. Uh, I think he he has to burn a flash. I mean, I think if he I just think... like walks away instead of clicking B in front of all of our faces, I think he also is fine. I mean, that's fair. I just don't think you can actually dive us that game early. Uh, and so Smolder not having flash isn't that bad of a like a deal to to burn for five stacks and actually having presence in lane. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I think five stacks is nice. I think if you if you lose flash, it means I can win. First spot clear, if Septi clears down, if he clears up, then I can kill his respawns, because we're getting a ward there anyway. I think I if he had yeah. he, he was he was clearing bot side, because he started top. Yeah. So it wouldn't be bad. I think the dive is still manageable. In fact, I think it might be winning, uh, just because it's like a jamma and not an engage support. So it's harder for... Yeah, and we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna dive here. We're gonna kill Septi at his blue, and you guys can't, like, exist, because you're a small dirt rel, right? Yeah, true, true, true. And especially, yeah, especially right. if he doesn't have flash, like he cannot click anywhere near that. I don't know. Since we have double is range. Yeah. Of talk. <laughs> Great TED talk, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, guys. But I can't even like shit talk this taco guy. Like, does he even play? I don't. That's the best no. part. <laughs> I can fucking shoot all of these I, I, at you. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely think I've been like outplayed and outsmarted. I mean, the only like. <laughs> Like, I had no counterplay to all Aiden of this. I came from the club and came to get in. I, I wish bro would get in. I would have loved it. you're going to find out what happens when he gets in. Someone would have to pick him up. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's probably not happening. Yeah, Taco, what do you play? <laughs> I mean, I do play the jungle. I refuse to play it, though. So. Oh, my formal oh, condolences to what's about to happen to you. Oh, no, it's fine. Oh, you don't want to join the be you don't want to become an ADC now with what's coming. I don't give a fuck. I honestly just want to play and not right, the so shit roll of jungle. Tell us about what happened last week. This last this last weekend, Warden. <laughs> oh, um. So, yeah, let's go with the person who just. Yeah. So. Sol. I got um, I got a little skull fucked by an Olaf, and then I got a little skull fucked by an Oriana, and that's that. Generally, what happened? I'm a in the fucking. Rest of the league? Uh, what else <laughs> happened in that league? I don't. I don't. I genuinely don't only, pay attention. Warden. Warden was only two games. Uh, yeah. Oh. Because the I had other only, game. Hit the back of the head so hard he forgot. They forgot. Hot damn. One was no. a forfeit. The other that was, was a buy. So. Yeah. Anneli. Anneli played Seneca. Seneca. I think Anneli won because they have their good players now. So mm -hmm. all I gotta say is NLE skull fucked Seneca game two. Yeah. It, I, I, like, I think I saw that. Over. Yeah, I glanced That's... over from stream two and I saw it was like 30 to 5 or something like that. And I was like, oh, that game's over. And that series think, over. I think in the same way that Piglet thought that Akuma was trash, we also thought that Seneca was bad based on like our games with them. Because when we played them, it was my first series on the team. Uh, they had support issues and ended up picking me up. And so I didn't feel very pressured. It felt like they made a lot of, like, forced plays. But it could have just been the same thing, right? Like, we caught them on a bad week. So I'm not, I'm not sure. When we played Seneca, we played them in week one. And they had, like... We beat them game one pretty handily. And then they just, like, started swapping people around. And we lost like two one, and to be honest, we like ran it down. We, you know, you saw last week we kind of suck. So like, I don't really know if they're good. They're um, there's like one dude who's like a mid laner and then a top laner, and he like swapped roles mid series. He was pretty good. The jungler was like a terrorist. I don't think he's like <laughs> re relative to the other junglers. I don't think he's like terrible, but like. In terms of, like, most likely to be on an FBI watch list, like, he's definitely, like, up there if there's an end-of-season reward for that. This <laughs> he's, like, a Fiddlesticks player, and then he also plays Hex slash Udyr, like, okay. Yeah, we actually give a lot of respect to that jungler, but I think we triple-banned him. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's probably, like, a good thing to do, you know? You gotta, like, don't negotiate with terrorists, just ban their champions. <laughs> so, I'm that, I think that is, like, a good strategy. And, to, I mean, you're, you have, you're the team with Emrys, right? Yeah. Yeah, that guy's good, so I'm sure he was fine against the terrorists. He probably hate crime, that guy. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. That I mean, is... just, to, just to be fair, uh, looking at their head-to-heads, which just shows your wins overall... I mean, they've only gone two zero twice so far and have lost uh, a series two one once. Everything else has been a two zero. Okay, but there I are mean, like it's been versus DP. Yeah, but MLA, there's like four yeah, good no, teams, uh, no. and that, the only like it's, top there's four only like team four teams. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're like <laughs> they're like this is like a four team league, right? Like next week is like plans, and I think because we're fourth seed, we get like what I'm just gonna call a mandated scrim against Econog. Like I. League doesn't really start again until semis, which so, is for uh, everyone else for earning a break. For your your fight against Ego Nog, please do note that their roster has changed. Did they put good players they in? They brought in or? Zohair. Supposedly, supposedly. Oh, Zohair. Yeah. Never mind. We're fine. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, Zohair's, Zohair's the homie. That, that's not like a... Zohair's uh, the homie. But yeah, uh, so it's supposed to be the... the From what I'm understanding, it's the roster that's going to be coming in for a winter split as well. So, um, um wait, yeah, can I actually like, is it like it's on, on the, the it's on the there? roster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's All on right, the right, right. we're gonna do we're gonna do live live roster review from Cherry. Let's let's see what's going on here. Like Zohair's well, been around like, for a while. She yeah, makes so, my I mean, life so much fucking easier. Yeah, Zo. Okay. Oh, they got Zohair and Quality Player. Okay, those are like, it could be worse. I mean, I don't know, Zohair's the homie. I've never spoken to Quality Player. I know he plays with Zohair a lot, so I mean. I was like, good for them. I'm Zohair sure have- was part of the org when me and Taco first played together back in 2019. Yeah, yeah Zohair's been, been around for a while. I know people that have, like, played with Zohair. I'm, I don't think I've ever, like, personally played with him, but I know, like, he's close enough to, like, the Solbert Gunter, you know, people, and then he also played for Dorado for a bit, so I, I like, vaguely know him. I mean, he's, I he's think- like, probably fine. I haven't seen him play in forever, so I don't know if he, like, has been playing the game, but, I mean, he's, he's like... It, it, it's fine. It, I it, it, I, genuinely, anything would be better than what they had before, right? So, I mean, yeah. in, in that respect, like, good, that's probably an upgrade. Ego um, Nog was just trying to punch up way past their limits. Yeah. My condolences to them, but, like, not really. They also have Helper on the roster. Oh, wait, that's my good Helper 08. Wow, it's going to be, like, a fun little reunion. Maybe we don't lose. That'd be really bad. That would be. But, but if we <laughs> like you get lose... more strays. No, but I mean, if we lose, it's like it's it's like playoffs, right? So then I'm like freed. You know, I get to like drift off into the abyss, dead, fallen, deceased. Synonyms of those words, right? So I mean, it's not like regular season where, you know, there's like I have to fucking limp back after getting like slow stroke like I did last week, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like <Where's> it's Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was Y'all intentional. Don't worry. Stay on stream. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm chilling. Don't worry. <laughs> Why not you, the others? <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, this is like not live, so if I say anything that's too bad, it's just gonna cut, get cut out. So I'm like, I'm I'm unleashed. I'm unlocked. Yeah, you're Other free teams. balling it. Um, okay, so that's like one team. What are the other teams that are like, Seneca? They, like, don't have their, like, normal starters in their starting slots, which, I mean, fair enough. But, like, I genuinely have no idea, like, who's going to show up on that team. They have, like, a top laner who also plays AD carry, and then a mid laner who plays top, and then, like, a top laner who plays, like, AD carry, or, like, mid or something, and a jungler who should be locked up. So it's, it's, it's like, a lot. So you don't really know I, what you're getting with them. I honestly think action. their only strength is the unpredictability. Yeah, I, I think so, too. That's why I'm kind of glad that NLE is playing them, because either, like, <laughs> Anneli, so they play them first round, right? Anneli is most likely just going to slow stroke them again, which is good because that means I don't have to play against Fiddlesticks ever again in my life. And, you know, not playing against Anneli, right? We haven't played against their, like, good roster. We played against, um... When we had two guys the... missing. Yeah. Wait, which, which, which player are you on them? I'm sorry. I, I, He's the I, owner? Role. He's, that's Piggy. I am the owner. No, but yeah, I, I know you're part of the org, but, like, what role is one of Oh, I played ADC. 
Okay, I'm gonna not say what I was about to say. Got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I played yeah. mid like week one, but I kind of just I, fail for them. I don't remember if I played against you or didn't, and I'm not gonna find out for my own sake. Um, so we're just gonna go on the All other right, team, so which is Akuma. Wait, I have a question. Is Basting like the starting top laner now, or is he just like there for the vibes just to fuck with me? Uh, no. So. I know that yesterday Klein had internet issues, so we didn't scrim with him, but he was also MIA for this series. I think he had something going on. Okay. Um, he was also MIA for the uh, MLE series. Uh, so, I'm, I mean, I assume yeah. that he'll be back next week, but... I see. So I was, I mean, again, on the topic of not paying attention to things, I was very surprised when I saw my good friend and former teammate basting against me. You know... <laughs> That, That's that was, always a fun thing to see. Yeah, I was like, I was like, hey Rob, what's up? And it's like, what was up is that he ran into my jungle and fucking killed me. So that was like a nice surprise, except it wasn't. Not only you, but he killed uh, your top laner too on that play. My 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 lawyer, which is who is my support, she's my lawyer. She has advised me not to comment on that play further, so I will not be commenting on that play. Can further. we comment on that a little bit further? They will never know. They can no, never know. It's, How would they know? But she watches all the episodes. But we can cut it. You're not we gonna fucking cut it. it. <laughs> <laughs> just blur it. If I, I was you and I, if I was you and I said some dumb shit, I would not cut it. So I'm not gonna say some dumb shit, or okay. I guess more dumb shit than I've already said. I guess is how it would work. Who so knows? what Cherry was about to say is. And exactly. <laughs> okay, there we go. Wait, that's some tech. Wait, that's some tech. Wait, I love wow. Sherry, I didn't know that's how you actually felt. Oh my goodness. Y'all do that. Um <laughs> anyways, back on track in terms of like playoff picture. Um, we play Ego Nog, like, unless I have an aneurysm, hopefully like we're gonna win that. I mean if not, like the winner of that series goes on to play Akuma. So if we win, we'll have a rematch and maybe I'll beat the fraud allegations. I mean they're, they're pretty strong allegations because everyone saw what happened last week. Like, I don't, I don't, I'd allegate yeah. against myself too. So, <laughs> you know, that's sort of my do or die thing. And then I, I mean, Enelie is just going to ball fuck Seneca. Like, let's be so for real, right? So, winner of that plays Enelie in the finals. You Wait, guys you are guys... just battling for second. Sure, we can believe that. Did you guys play Kuma in regular season? How did, or yeah. You guys did. How did that go? It was like 2 1, but our uh, ADC. Uh, had like 300 ping. I so played I had a that you? series of my life, that, that series. Okay, I was yeah. like inting. I was running it down. I'm not going to lie. I played so bad. All right. Let me facilitate some trash talk here. AFK Boulder, what are you going to do to Piglet if you find him in the bot lane in like finals? Uh, I'm not going to walk up into a bush game three and like die and throw my entire lane. So you're saying if you did not grief that, you would have you would have won, right? Like, you know, and obviously it happens, right? Mistakes happen. Uh, game three, I think our draft was also really hard to play that week. Um, but I also like inted mid on repeat instead of playing around my fed rumble in game one. And so like, I, I don't know, as long as I play like a human, it, it'll be a closer series. But So now, now Piglet, AFK Boulder is saying that like, you know, he just messed up, you know, he made some mistakes that happens, but he said that he should have won that series. So what do you have to say in response to that allegation? Well, he's saying if he played that your like win, a human. Because, I mean, he's pretty much saying that your win was fraudulent and wasn't really representative of the skill between the two teams. So, but what's going on there? Like, are you going to take that? I mean, he went 1-20 and 20 against ADCs when they have ping under 200. Oh, shit. God. I, I was not a human in that series. I took entire blame for that. Yeah, but are you going to are you gonna do it again? Are you going to, you know, I mean, because... You know, like I said, it's playoffs. It's do or die. And I mean, you're not gonna roll over and die, right? You're gonna you're gonna lock in. <laughs> I mean, I don't expect anything less than probably a three one or three zero. Oh. He's not even giving you going to five. That's kind of crazy. crazy. I wouldn't take that. If I were you, I wouldn't take that. Uh, it doesn't matter to me, right? I got I got dumpstered, right? So it's not like they have anything to prove we do. Yeah. Yeah, we're just kind of waiting to see who can actually challenge us. Now that we have everyone here. Yeah. Ooh, Cher, are you going to take that? Um, and tell them that you'll beat them in finals? I mean, to be honest, it's like, their mid and jungle are like genuinely good players, but it's like, 
whoever else that like was there by like when we played them it was kind of like lacking I, i'll fucking say it like the bot lane like absolutely ran it down in our series it was a little <laughs> insane it was a little it was genuinely insane like how much how much prio my bot lane had i was playing shavano two games in a row and to be honest i didn't really have to play the game because my bot lane genuinely won so hard that i could just walk into enemy jungle and hate crime him on repeats which my formal condolence is evan for that sorry but i mean yeah i i'm just hearing that like you know, you're you're talking crazy on AFK Boulder for running it down bot lane, but you know, pot calling the kettle black sort of situation going on. I mean, to be fair, when you don't have you know, prio, you get to have the easiest time as a jungler. But yeah, now with you know, new mid, new jungler, or at least you know, having our actual mid and actual jungler. It's not going to be the same story as well as we get open up a champ pools, you know, different kind of options. Because yeah, we I still have that... a lot of things that we have, you know, in the playbook that we can't, you know, we're not looking to show off yet. I, mean, I, I genuinely do have, like, a lot of respect for your jungler as a player. But I, I don't get to, like, pay attention or, like, watch, like, all of it. But what I have seen, I've been, like, you know, like, I can, I can say I'll, like, skull fuck people, but, like, that, that's like a good player. But like if my bot lane's like turbo winning, it doesn't really matter how good he is. <laughs> I was like, if you beat Akuma, you'll see what Emrys can do. Yeah, that's true. I have to beat the fraud allegations first, and then then my bot lane can carry me finals. You might you might have a good chance too. We might should not show up on the day. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. How does it work here? Oh, that's a that's a mind control dab into not hate criming me like he did on that dive. That was that was diabolical. Like I I oh god. I that guy's to, crazy uh, with it. I mean, good for him. Credit where credit is due. I also need to rein in Septi a little bit. Some of those nocturnal Ds. Oh uh, my god. Like, I was going to say it. Septi's my best friend, but though. Jesus fuck Septi. What the fuck were you doing? <laughs> I love Septi. I just focused on playing my role. I was like, Maokai does two things, right? He buys space and he follows and gauges. So I'm just going to do that. Yeah, I really I really did order um, one, one Septi on DoorDash a few times, but... He's still my goat. I, I've never seen him play Nocturne. So, I mean, I assume it's a pick that... I mean, like, Nocturne, like, plays itself, but it's also, like, knowing that... Cafe, uh, Cafe told us before the series, he was like, you can leave Belveth up, just pick Nocturne into it, and it's really hard for Belveth to play. And so, like, it changed our prep around. Like... I was going to be really sad if we lost the game after, like, going for that and not sticking with our regular prep. People but... pick Nocturne into Belveth. It's, like, not that bad. Of... It's, like, a bad matchup if I have, like... If I have like brain damage and like try and click his camps on repeat because he can like just right click you and he can win the fight early game. But once you get two items and Nocturne's like clicking into Belveth, Belveth just kills the Nocturne. That did happen multiple times. It's like okay, so. Tell me about tell me about what you guys think because you go into playoffs next week. The only game being played is Eagle Nog versus uh, Contingent Orange. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that matchup, I mean, they, they have a different roster, so you never really know. But, I mean, we should win. If we don't win, that would be pretty bad. I mean, I will I will pass away metaphorically. And, you know, you guys on the next uh, podcast episode can, like, play me because I would deserve it. But I think we should I think it's fine. contingent favored. But I wouldn't be surprised if Nog took a game. Is it best of three or best of five, by the way? Best it's of right three. now it's best of threes, and then it goes to best of fives for your semis afterwards. Okay. I guess that is technically losable. I mean, all games are technically losable if I run it down, but... If you suffer a stroke. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Let me try to eat right. healthy so I don't suffer Do you have any questions about uh, Warden League you'd like to bring up? Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess I you guys both play different roles than me, so I want your guys' input on the sort of other players in your role. I mean, I've spoken at length about the junglers I think are good, Emrys, and the junglers I think are bad, most everyone else. Um, <laughs> I I, I guess like I'm curious about like your takes on the other players on other teams in your roles. I've only played against. See, I played against Kane and I played against uh, Mocha, and I thought Mocha played extremely well. 
um, understanding like limits on both games. I think uh, I didn't play around Jenna range enough in game one. I thought Mocha was like really good, but I don't remember too much about the bot lane in the NLE series. I'm not gonna lie, my head was not in that game. Piglet. Um, looking at other roles for like mid lane, I have to say like Dab has the highest potential of probably being like you know one of the like if not the best mid laner possibly player in the league. But for ADCs, I think um, Baywa is that how you pronounce it? Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. Like yeah. he is a he is very much a good ADC and. Like, I will attest to that him just, you know, outright better than Bongo to some degree. Hey, what's the Storm? Code? Storm may have ninja oh, oh. AFK'd. I'm doing my best. You're fine. Um, Going off, I want to say the standout top laners for this league, I would give it to Klein. Um, I've played against him in MSL before, and he's he's really good. Um, NLE, Fury, has been putting out some pretty good games. Being kind of the role player they need him to be. Cherry, obviously, leads everyone in the jungle position. Um, and those are really the only lanes I really deal with as a top laner. Everyone else just kind of exists. <laughs> well, are we? This is just now a thing. Everybody else just exists. That's the thing now. Yeah. Wooly, bully, they only matter bully. if I'm on Shen. That is, uh, I, I wanna give I wanna give a shout out in terms of top laners. My weak side kid in fields. Um most top laners I play with would have a genuine like breakdown if I gave them as little attention as I do my top laner. But he has been a rock in terms of keeping me sane when I um, leave him to die and leave him to try. And so I want to shout out Peels. Peels, you're the goat. Um, I'm going to keep pathing away from you, but just know I still love you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead, Willie. I, this is another one I don't really have any good input on. Okay. Not a problem. Got to give you the option to talk. All right. Other Taco? Other Taco? What? Yeah. Well, I this asked if you one. had any questions and uh, Cherry answered. So now you're Other Taco. Oh, I guess I lost my name. <laughs> she stole it from you, just like apparently. Jungle. Uh, no, no other questions. Actually, yeah, Sherry, get a five man. Fucking meet me on the rift. I'll play jungle again. <laughs> okay. yeah, well, we can we can set out. the scrim up right now. <laughs> I don't have a we... team to be honest. We're a diamond team. I can I can lend you a team. I can lend you my meta shift team. <laughs> I can lend you a team. <laughs> they might be a little higher rank, but... Oh, uh, Wait, doesn't NLE have, like, an OQ team? Don't give him yeah. that. <laughs> Don't give him that, what though. We, what we, we could do is we could do, like, uh, uh, like we did with in Soul uh, Comp games. We can let people sign up to play on your team and just have it, like, Cherry and Taco. And then you guys have to play Jungle, and then people can sign up and join your team, and we'll see if you can play with randos. That God, the, uh... can I play? With, can I play with randoms? I feel like I, I don't think right I'm now. allowed to play with randoms anymore. Shows... I think I lost that after I started flaming people. It shows I think that's called the strength you. of your jungle if you can play with people. I don't. I don't think I. I don't think I'd flame randoms because I'm a nice, non-toxic gamer who has never been, um, uh, got restricted or anything. Ever. Yeah, and it, yeah. nobody has any evidence of the contrary. <laughs> However, comma. <Just> <laughs> Is that no, why you okay. say and <laughs> uh, my my lawyer will be in contact with every single one of you actually. <laughs> Alright, fucking send them my way. I'll fight the law. I'll fucking role play. Uh, any any styles. actual any actual questions for uh warden before we move on to some uh community uh, questions. I guess no the final question. like ending question yeah. would be like uh in terms of I don't actually know how this league works, but is there like there's like playoffs, but is there like I know some leagues do like all star games or whatever? Or, like... Um we don't currently do all star teams because we 
we didn't used to uh, get enough people in the league. Um, for example, last flip, we only had 16 teams total across all three leagues. So uh, we're, that is something we're hoping that we're going to be able to start opening up. Uh, and I do know that the Warden prediction stuff for playoffs, the pickums, oh, pick will be up later tonight. So you will be able to do that at least. Okay. Yeah, I'm I gotta grab see what the vibes were. Yeah, yeah. That is definitely something we are looking at doing though, is the is like all star or all star games and stuff. But like I said, there's just not enough not enough players to play games for Warden to have all stars. But definitely something worth uh poking Soul Keeper about and uh and and we can try and get that set up for next split. Alright, seeing no further questions, we're going to move on over to the community questions, where we grab four questions from, you know, the list that the community has posted for us. There were quite a lot of questions this week, so I picked out the first four that caught my eye, so we'll catch up with the other ones next week. Um, so for the first question, all of these are going to be for all of you, except for the very last one, which is an LXD questions, which is fine. But um, first question is from Badger, one of our casters and a player in the league. And he says, what is your competitive league story? Like, how long, how did you get involved in the scene or and or get involved in your respective team and or organization? So we'll start with Wooly Bully and work our way up. Oh, um, I guess I got started in the scene back in Runeterra Academy. What was that? Three, four years ago? That sounds right. Four years ago. Um, yeah, I've been playing League for a long time and never took it seriously. And then somebody said, hey, uh, you should play competitively. And I was like, that's what high ELO people do. And they're like, no, no, there's small leagues for people who suck just like you. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, I think my playing days are coming to an end here probably after this next split but uh i'm gonna stick around and probably uh support orgs and leagues and that kind of thing because i do enjoy being around the community Ooh. very nice very nice taco what about you oh uh, actually i got started me and piglets got a started a team together well not started we're on a team together but at the time i think it was eight years ago um I was one rank below him at the time, and they kind of were just like, hey, our jungler sucks. You want to jungle for us? So I was like, sure. And then I got banned from that league because I think for two games, I had a perfect game on J4 and then 100% KP on Sejuani. And they're like, oh, you're banned. Smurf. And I was like, yeah, they, were, they were accusing Taco of being a smurf just because he was playing good. And it's like, Complex. You're punishing us for him being good? Like, and then there was another guy where he had unlisted accounts that so just banned the whole org. Yeah, so I got banned for playing good, so I don't know. And then I started coaching, and now I'm trying to play or coach again for a while. Very, very nice. Storm, what about you? Um... So my competitive scene mildly started really drunk in the middle of a comic convention in Chicago when I was given a postcard pamphlet thing from a Discord server called CMSA. A uh, shout out them. They run in-house leagues where they just kind of do like week by week draft leagues. Um and then after kind of getting a kick for that, I started kind of kicking around some other discords and eventually got brought into RAR in MetaShift, and this has been my first year playing. I've uh, been pl played in MetaShift, LXC, and I believe we're about to start Beer League, I think, and have transitioned from just being the top winner that shows up to being our team's drafter to co-captain, so it's it's been a lot of movement in less than a year. You've been busy. <laughs> Cherry, what about you? Um, right around the start of COVID, when I was 17 or so, 
me and my high school friends really liked playing Clash, and we all sucked at Clash, so we got so tilted that we just decided to start joining scrim servers to book scrims so that we could practice for Clash, which is an insane sentence now that I say it out loud. <laughs> that's sort of how I got introduced to the concept of like scrims and like leagues. But, I mean, shout out to Clash. I also wrote a supplemental essay about Clash for my college essays, and that got me in. So Clash really like, you know, big shout out to Clash. Cool. How did you name that? Um, for Kinti, I mean, I this is like my first split, like playing for them. I mean, in terms of orgs, I like, I mean, I mostly like know and hang around Dorado, but uh, Kinti didn't have like a tryout form, and like the coach is someone that I've known and spoke to for a bit, and like someone I, you know, genuinely respect. And I, I normally have like, I don't usually like coaches because that, you know. They're annoying, but I figured that I'd give it a try with someone that I actually like, you know, think is a very good and smart player. So that's why I'm here. Cool beans. AFK Gilbert? So I got started in comp close to, uh, like, like back in 2021. It was, I think, the first or second year of Stratus, which was the C9 Super Fan Program. And some friends of mine asked me if I could play top lane for their gold team. Uh, that was that was there because they were losing their top laner. I guess he ranked out or something. Uh, and that was my first introduction with competitive, and I just realized like how different the game was between comp and solo. Uh, that was a really good time. I decided to stick with that. Then I found uh, a team in the Degenerate Sword. That was the one that Bixis owned. That wasn't a great environment, so I left and then became the top laner for Rising Tide. And then we made playoffs on that team. And this was all in Victorious. Then after that, uh, I was going to a nameless tryout um, just to fill in and have fun, and I played support for that series, and that marked my transition from playing top lane to playing support. I found a team on CB with Outrage, and uh, I think Induce was playing as well. I can't remember. Uh, and then my friend Cyclone. So we went to finals that split in BOL. Then that ended. I played for uh, a plat team in CB, which was CB Heist. That was very depressing. And then moved into Emerald after that, played on uh, Clown Gaming. Then I captained the team in Draft. Uh, we went to finals in there. And now I'm currently here on, uh, on Akuma. Beans. Piglet. Uh... I first got into competitive when I went played in collegiate. I was a sub for my college team at U Pike, and then one of the other players there had an org that I ended up joining, where I played with Taco, and that was a while back. And then recently, I got into coaching, picked up a silver team, and then that was formerly called Brad Balster Gaming. We name changed to. NLE and just grew to where we are now. But all in all, it was a pretty straightforward process from, you know, silver to getting a gold team. Mm -hmm. Then we just picked up a diamond team and a OQ team. So here I am just occasionally subbing in when needed, but a lot of what I do is managing and just owning a org. Well, there you have it, Badger. All right, our next question is, what champions do you think will continue to see every split, and which do you feel we'll never see again? This is from Beards and Cats. We'll start uh, Start with Wooly. <laughs> Run the question one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you weren't paying attention. That's all you I, I was listening. Over. I was listening, um, but... No, it's quite all right. It's quite all right. Uh, I said, what champions do you think we'll continue to see every split, and which do you feel we'll never see again? Oh. Oh. Um, I think... I'm just going to speak from a bot lane perspective right now, because that's my most recent experience in comp. Um, I think the staples of bot lane aren't ever going anywhere. Uh, the Nautilus, Leona, engaged champions. Because even when 
engaged tanks aren't their strongest, they're still good for competitive play. And then the same goes for ADCs like Ash, who brings support outside of just, you know, doing damage. She may never be as strong as she was, you know, in, in previous patches here. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, when you have a champion with an R like Ash and um, that can affect the map globally and provide vision all the time, like, it's hard to say that that champion will never show up again. Um, champion that'll never show up again, though. <laughs> Hmm. I guess I have a clarification question. Mm. Like, when you say champion that will never show up again, are you are we talking about champions we don't think will ever be picked? Be you, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you won't you won't see in competitive. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Can this be by role? Uh, oh, he God. does not specify. So yeah, let's go crazy. <laughs> Like I'm saying, like, could a champion that shows up that normally shows up support that's currently a jungler never show up again? Are we counting that? Oh, uh, yeah, because that. Like, um, I am not sure if that is. I can, let me pull up. I will be playing exact... Zyra jungle until the day I die, so you don't gotta worry. I <laughs> cannot so wait for that shit to that. get gutted. <laughs> um, the exact way he writes it is: What do you think is the most competitive and least competitive champions? Which ones will we likely see year after year in competitive, and which do you think we'll never see? One oh, Let's... he does he does specify one per lane. Mm. So he is doing it by lane. So there's your there's your answer. Yes, yes. That's such a loaded question. My God. I, <laughs> I, uh, right? <laughs> honestly, I don't know all the champions. Mm-hmm. There's too many for me. I barely what? remember what champions I play. Who, who do we have for laners here? I'm top. I play top. Cherry plays jungle. jungle. AFK plays support, right? Yeah, support and top lane. So we just need a min to support and just all to take our roles. I mean, I will, I will, I will go with jungle. I will say that in terms of a champion, I mean, there's a lot of champions that previously have not seen competitive success, especially in recent patches that are being picked a lot more. And for jungle, for example, it's like there's the fun rise of Shivana because Perry made like one video on it, then people realize it's OP. I mean, even like to a lesser extent, if we're looking at LTK right now, people are playing Nasus and Garen mid. And these champions have not been like buffed recently. It's just that, you know, pros and like high level players have sort of figured out how to optimally use these champions and how to optimally pilot them. And then slowly but surely it will trickle down into the you know, Q level play, then into like you know, like Diamond, then trickle down through the ELOs. I'll say one champion that I do not think in the jungle is least likely to get even this sort of like renaissance of attention is Briar. I think her kits fundamentally, A, just has issues in terms of being too polarizing for her to be in a state of being balanced, she's either going to have numbers that are too high, she's going to be lethality and one-shot everyone, or she's just going to be what she is now, which is vaguely useless. But I think even if she is in a state of being relatively strong, she's a champion that in competitive is very, very beatable. It's a champ that sort of requires the chaotic mess of a solo queue game to be functional, and I do not think that... We will be seeing much of her in comp in the near future. Bring me some new new gameplay. Please, for the love of God. I haven't <laughs> seen that champion in so long. I fucking spammed it. I am a menace with the new new. Someone please bring that back to comp. I don't even care if it's a troll pick. Sodium hydroxide, you heard that? Uh, yeah, come on. I'm the op. Pull it out. I know you got it. In terms yeah, of like, fucking pull it out. I will claim you as the MVP. I'm sorry, I'm just thinking of Nunu and the tower that him? thing brings to the rift. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Imagine how much fun it is when you fucking run through mid and you just go boom and then they die and they wonder how. Every time or... I think of Nunu, I think of my friend Riddy, who is a GM jungler who plays like Nunu Shaco. He keeps trying to lock it in comp and it's like. 
<laughs> the other thing I really like about Nunu is the invisible snowball. <laughs> the dumbest bug to exist oh, for as long it. as it has. It's so uh, great. It's just a feature at this point, by the way. Like, <laughs> it's been around for so long. Yeah. You can't take it away from me now. So gonna... but that's just for the jungle. I have so many other champions to go to. <laughs> Let's say support. Uh, I don't think we'll ever see Zareth in competitive play. Uh, super weak champion. Just, like, can be used in very rare scenarios, but I just think there's always a better pick. Uh, and then I, I think Leona is strong, and I think, she, like, right now, and I think she'll probably maintain being strong. Um, it's getting a pretty rough nerf, data mind next patch. Minus yeah. four face armor. That's kind of rough. I think it balances her to a little bit more even instead of being OP, but I still yeah. think, like, it's it's just provides Leona's so much Leona's still going to do what down. Leona's going to do. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's kind of what it boils down to. It's the same thing with Nautilus. Like, he's just going to do Nautilus things. Okay. There you have it, Beards. Um, our next question is from Resilient, as you all know and love. Um, he says, what type of ADC do you prefer? The Scaling Princess or the Aggro Demon? We'll start. That's easy. When, okay. I'm, when, I'm okay. when I'm playing AD carry, I'm the aggro demon. When I'm playing every single other role, I prefer scaling princess. Hope that helps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't agree more with that statement, except when I play ADC, I play the scaling demon or supportive ADC as well. But uh, I want to think that I like to play aggro, except I just go 0 and 12. So. <laughs> Sounds like a skill issue on your part. I can't lie. No, yeah, you're, you're not just... wrong. I don't play ADC. so You're just the dead demon. <laughs> I like drafting my, my AD carry Kog'Maw, and then just out of nowhere, he's 2v2 killing their AD carry at level 2. And the support. I'm like, he's doing both. My, uh, my ADC on scaling versus aggro, because the ease of execution is just so much better. I don't have to do anything for them. They'll they'll get into the game. Whereas if uh, if we take, like, a lane bully or something that has to get ahead, then, like, you're turbo-greasing your game if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, as okay. as... Like, support was my main role in competitive for a long time. I agree with that. And also, I love to just leave my ADC alone and go affect, affect the rest of the map. So uh, it sucks if they're playing something like that's super aggro and you have to be there because your lane has to get ahead for your team. Mm -hmm. As an ADC, I actually prefer, like, just aggro demon because I wouldn't be trying to take that tower ASAP. I want to take their ADC out of the game because, you know, that's a win condition. Those are dragons. I get myself ahead, accelerated on the map. It's just three out of towers, three early objectives. And then if I get to the point, it's just 2v1 bot lane, let my support never come back. Classic debate of communism helping the team or capitalism helping yourself. <laughs> True. Well, I mean, I, it's it's literally from an ADC a jungle and a support point of view. Supports want scaling. The jungler depends on uh, who she's with, apparently. And, uh, you know, the ADCs want to go aggro so they can get their objectives quickly and, and get ahead. So, there you have it. I think it's actually a pretty good, pretty good insight into uh, lane preferences and what they prefer their ADC to be like. The mind of an ADC, they always want to be the main character. Right, they're like, rawr! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can, I can relate. I've played AD carry for a significant longer period of time than I've played jungle, and I, I mean, I, I still remember the mindset. I sort of, what I, how I had it described as playing with me was just play for Chelsea esports, which, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I can get it, right? Like, when, when I'm playing AD carry, and if I'm excited, that is miserable. So I I don't blame them. I mean I'm still not. Gonna it's in that, the but... name, carry. Like you are the yeah. carry the team. Yeah. Team should respect that the ADC has a C in the name. You're not a top mid or jungle. You're a carry. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. But also Baywa, we're we're invading enemy jungle. Fuck your plates. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but middle has me in it. So just saying. So th I'm also in you. Oh, damn. Fuck what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ian. <laughs> wow. I, mean, uh, I, I discovered so much today. 
I'm happy for you, I think, probably. Cheers. Consensually, consensually. Okay. All right. Well, that's all the questions we have for today. So that does end the podcast. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for being here with me. Piglet, AFK Boulder, Cherry for showing up. We heart you. Uh, Storm, Taco, Wooly, and Ribbon. Thank you guys for being here and chatting with me for like two hours over. Uh, Hopefully, Cher- Cherry stuff. doesn't choke this week. Yeah, don't Brew. forget that. Don't yeah. forget that Cherry said. And. You have to give her that little sound bit. For the um, for the, for the record, I also hope I don't choke. Like I'm I'm on the same wavelength as y'all. Like, not a fan of choking, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty bad yeah. for one's health. Yes, yeah, spitters are for quitters. That's all I got to end on. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody, and have a great night. Welcome to LXC.